Si de comedias de la década del 90 se trata, no podemos dejar de hablar de los hermanos Peter y Bobby Farrelly. Les recuerdo que la primera entrevista que hice del canal fue sobre Tonto y Retonto con el tercer guionista de este grupo, con Bennett Yellen. Ahora hablé con el productor histórico de los Farrelly, con Charles Wessler, que me contó cómo fue en este caso enfocarse en Loco por Mary, una de las películas que más me gustaba ver cuando era chiquito. Hablamos de escenas icónicas de esta película, como la del cierre, como la del famoso gel de pelo y cómo fue que hicieron para poner todo eso en una película. Todo en este informe sobre Loco por Mary. We now return to Mira Akien and Contre with our latest interview. You spent a lot of time away from LA working really hard on making that funny. Really hard and over and over and a couple of road trips. And this is the truth. We handed in the script and about three days later they called us and said, We're in. Let's do it. We love it. Yeah. So, in fact, it was one of the easiest. It, no, it wasn't one. It was the easiest project we ever did in terms of writing it, submitting it, and, and getting a yes. Are you okay, Ted? It was definitely love. I'm Mary again. I mean, crushes don't last for 13 years, right? Is there any truth, like, or truth events that inspire this story? Like, in because if you write it, So fast? No, 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 no. In fact, in fact, the script is based on a script that some friends of ours wrote that wasn't particularly good. They, they had sent it all over the place, but the premise was excellent. We changed it by 90%. The truth is it was not a good script. And I, I, I'm not saying they're bad writers. You know, writers write bad stuff all the time and good stuff all the time. But in this particular case, it wasn't good and nobody wanted to make it. Yeah. And that's how we came up with the idea. But by the way, are some, is some of it true? Well, you know, everything that is written comes from a, a part of our lives that is true. Some a lot more specific than others, but things like when, when he um, uh, goes to the bathroom and gets his zipper caught, that happened uh, to Bobby Fairley. We got a bleeder. Not quite like that, but that it where the, the, the mother at the house wanted to look at it. <laughs> Pretty funny. And uh so little th little things like that. There was somebody who gave Pete some advice to to masturbate prior to going on a hot date. Oh my god, he doesn't flog the dolphin before a big date. Are oh. you crazy? That's like going out there with a loaded gun. Of course, that's why you're nervous. Yeah, so there's a lot of pieces that are true. Obviously, there's no scene that I'm aware of where anybody, you know, I don't think it's physically possible to masturbate yeah. and have jizz go in this angle. <laughs> you know, but nobody asked that question, so it was fine. No, your left ear. Is that? Is that a hair gel? Did you have any issues with censorship specific, specifically with, with this scene in particular that you are mentioning that we end with, with the hair? Like, I don't know for how was rated this movie. I think I, I was. It was the first hot. It was the highest grossing R rated comedy at the time. There have been some since that have broken that. But, you know, that always happens. Yeah. Um, no, what happened was, oddly enough, no, we got an R rating, which made it, the studio didn't really want an R rating, but we didn't want to. Yeah. do anything else and the, the president of the studio who's, who's now running and he's now he ran went on to become the chairman of the studio and then became the chairman of another studio now uh he he ordered us to cut the scene before we shot it i mean he literally said i want you to cut it like i don't want to talk about it you don't have a choice you're going to cut it and we said okay we lied and said okay we'll cut it and then we shot it we knew that it was going to be funny interesting story here is You know, we, we show it to the studio. We don't show it to them in a small room with 30 people. You don't want to do that. So we do it at a test screening where we show it in front of 300 people and then they write up their opinions and we ask them questions and stuff like that. The studio president is there and the chairman and the vice president. There's like five people marketing. They're in the, a real theater. People who are coming to see it don't know what they're going to go see. You know, there's no, there's no titles. It's not even finished yet. And... Um, One of the questions in the, in, the, in the questionnaire was, what is your favorite scene? And then underneath that is, what is your least favorite scene? And of the 300 people who we don't know, they were, this was like in, you know, 100 miles south of Los Angeles. They, 50%, I'm not kidding about this, 50% of the people who said, 
that the hair, the hair gel in the hair was their favorite scene, meaning whacking off and the hair was their favorite sequence. And the other half said their least favorite scene was the hair gel. I, it, it was, it was hilarious. And of course my take was, and Pete too, was, well, great. We're keeping it because <laughs> it's their favorite fucking scene. And the studio said, Oh, they hate it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was funny. Hey, we even, we even read it differently, but we kept it. We, you know, we're not going to let them cut that scene. And it became a pivotal scene in the movie. So when you say, um, killer, you mean uh, he's a murderer? Yeah. Like an actual no. convicted murderer? He killed people. I know it's crazy. How was convincing Cameron Diaz um, and Ben Stiller to, to do this scene in particular? Oh, that, that scene, there was no point when anybody, whether it was, um, uh um ben or cameron they, they were they were very uh happy to do everything that was in the script nobody said no i i know that when we did the masturbation moment where he's masturbating in the bathroom he wanted to clear the stage where we shot it on a st little stage and um yeah we cleared it so he felt more comfortable making that stupid face or whatever he's doing but you know he's he's very He's very good. He's very funny. He's a very smart guy. And Cameron has amazing instincts. The, both of them, obviously, are very, yeah. so perfect. We lucked out. You know, I mean, she wasn't a big movie star, but, but she was, for us, it was like so obvious. And when we, she came in, she came in to meet us, went, met at a restaurant, me, Pete, and Bob. And we're talking and she's, hey, listen, I got to ask you a question. And please, you, you can say no. Of course, you can say no. He's like, yeah, what is it? She said, I'm going out with this guy. Um, oh, what's his name? Who played who played the, the private eye? Do you remember his name? Yeah, and my um, You asked me to follow around your girl, and I did. And then the truth is, I I started to like her. She said, I'm dating Matt Dillon. What do you think about him for the part of the private eye? And I'm forgetting his name, but and we were thinking like. I mean, you know, it was too, it was, you couldn't like be like the three of us have to talk about it. We we're like, well, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I remember thinking, eh, maybe, and I wasn't sure that he would really be good because I also, I, I didn't know if he would be able to do that kind of thing. I didn't really know him, but we, we eventually did hire him, not because they were dating, because we just thought about it. And we were like, yeah, he'd be great. Yeah. And I think he turned out to be perfect. Yeah. But, you know, like he he's one of those actors that commits himself to a thing. Once he's doing it, he's in, you know, so it's good. Cameron Diaz, Matt Dillon, Ben Stiller. There's something about Mary. The thing with this movie, you mentioned how the main idea is someone that remembers an old uh, uh, classmate and wants to track her down like can you imagine this script working in this era with Instagram, Facebook, like Twitter, or whatever social media you want to mention? Oh, it's a good point. Yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. I guess it would be a lot easier to track her down. Although, if she was really trying to get away from Woogie, then she probably would have no, no uh, uh, social media at all. Yeah. So it might be a little trickier using that, but Theoretically, it would be even he just has to go online and there she'd be. Yeah. But who knows?